Ever feel like your heart is a mystery? Mmm. Hidden away under your ribs? Yeah. What if I told you there was a way to unlock its secrets? Okay. To see its inner workings? Yeah. With incredible detail, all without any surgery? That's the power of echocardiography. Wow. Today, we're diving deep into this fascinating world. All right. Specifically, the formulas that help cardiologists understand. Okay those ultrasound images. Yeah. It's like having a secret decoder ring for your heart. Interesting. Huge thanks to London Heartbeat Z Academy. Oh, cool. For the source material. Be sure to check them out. Okay. And remember, yeah. you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, Spotify, and YouTube wow. for more deep dives just like this one. Sounds good. So. It's amazing how these formulas rooted in physics and fluid dynamics yeah. can take simple sound waves and turn them into a detailed map of your heart. Wow. We can see how your valves are working, yeah. how blood is flowing through the chambers, and even measure the pressure inside those chambers. Okay, so let's unpack this. Yeah. We're diving into a review guide from the American Society of Echocardiography. Okay. Which I know is a big deal in the cardiology world. Absolutely. It's a highly respected resource that helps standardize how we interpret echocardiograms, right. ensuring accurate diagnoses and treatment plans. It covers a lot of ground, right? Yeah. From leaky valves to narrowed valves yeah. and even heart pressures. Yes. It's a comprehensive guide. Okay. And it all starts with understanding the basics of blood flow and how the heart works. Got it. Yeah. So first up, let's talk about aortic regurgitation. Okay. I always imagine it like a leaky faucet. Yeah. But instead of water, it's blood flowing backward through the valve. That's a great analogy. Thanks. And to measure how severe that leak is, yeah. we have a couple of key formulas. Okay. One is the flow convergence method, Okay. also known as PISA. Hmm. It uses color Doppler ultrasound. Like the weather radar? Think of it like those weather radar images. Gotcha. To visualize blood flow. I'm picturing it now. Yeah. What are we looking for in those images? We're looking for a specific area where the blood flow changes color and starts to converge. That's the PSA. Okay. By analyzing its size, shape, and the speed of blood flow, uh -huh. we can calculate how much blood is actually leaking back through the aortic valve. So it's not just about eyeballing it. There's right. a precise formula behind it. Exactly. The formula helps us go beyond just seeing the leak and actually quantifying it. Okay. What about the continuity method? Right. What's that all about? The continuity method is all about comparing blood flow at different points. Hmm. Think of it like measuring traffic flow on a highway. Okay. If you know how many cars are entering a section of highway and yeah. how many are exiting, okay. you can figure out if there's been any leakage. Okay. Maybe an exit ramp you didn't account for. So we're comparing blood flow before and after the aortic valve to see how much is leaking backward. Precisely. And based on these calculations, yeah. we categorize the severity of the leak, mild, moderate, or severe. Now, why does the severity matter? What does it mean for the patient? The severity of the leak directly impacts how hard the heart has to work. Hmm. A mild leak might not cause any noticeable symptoms, right. but a severe leak can force the heart to pump much harder, mm -hmm. potentially leading to fatigue, shortness of breath, and other problems. So understanding the severity helps guide treatment decisions. Absolutely. Okay. It helps determine if medication is enough to manage the condition. Yeah. Or if a more invasive procedure like valve replacement might be necessary. Got it. Yeah. Next up, we have aortic stenosis. All right. Which is basically a narrowing of the aortic valve. Mm. Imagine trying to squeeze a whole lot of traffic through a narrow tunnel. Okay. That's essentially what's happening in the heart. Another great analogy. Thanks. In aortic stenosis, yeah. that narrowed valve opening restricts blood flow, making the heart work harder to push blood through. So we're looking at how fast the blood is moving yeah. to figure out how narrow the valve is. Exactly. The faster the blood flow, the yeah. narrower the opening. Yeah. And just like with aortic regurgitation, uh. we have a grading system for stenosis severity, mild, moderate, and severe to guide treatment decisions. Mm. It sounds like these grading systems are crucial for doctors to make the best choices for their patients. They really are. Okay. It helps ensure that patients receive the right treatment at the right time. Got it. Yeah. Moving right along. Okay. Now we're on to the mitral valve. All right. Where we have both mitral regurgitation and mitral stenosis. Right. So with mitral regurgitation, okay. we're dealing with a leaky 
mitral valve, mm. allowing blood to flow backward from the left ventricle into the left atrium. So it's like the aortic regurgitation we talked about, yeah. but happening on a different valve. Exactly. And just oh. like with aortic regurgitation, we use those same trusty methods, yeah. PSA and continuity, mm -hmm. to assess the severity of the mitral valve leak. So those formulas are pretty versatile, huh? Yeah. They can be applied to different valves. You got it. They're based on the same underlying principles of fluid dynamics. Right. So we can use them to measure leaks in various parts of the heart. Okay, so what about mitral stenosis? Mm. What's happening there? In mitral stenosis, yeah. the mitral valve opening is narrowed, uh -huh. restricting blood flow from the left atrium into the left ventricle. So similar to aortic stenosis. Yes. Yeah but on the mitral valve. Precisely. We're once again dealing with a narrowed opening. Okay. And just like with aortic stenosis, yeah. we use Doppler ultrasound to assess the severity of the narrowing. It's amazing how much information we can get from these sound waves. It really is. Yeah. And we're only scratching the surface of what echocardiography can do. Okay, I'm ready for more. Right. What's next? Next up are the pulmonic valves. Pulmonic stenosis and pulmonic regurgitation. All right, so pulmonic stenosis. Yeah. We're talking about a narrowed pulmonic valve. I got it. Okay, and pulmonic regurgitation. Mm -hmm. You guessed it. Yes. Is a leaky pulmonic valve letting blood flow backward. Exactly. It seems like we're seeing a pattern here. Leaks and narrowing, mm -hmm. but on different valves. Exactly. Okay. And the beauty of echocardiography yeah. is that we can apply the same principles and formulas okay. with slight modifications mm -hmm. to understand these conditions no matter which valve is affected. So it's all about understanding those underlying principles? Precisely. Okay. Once you grasp those, yeah. you can apply them to various situations. Okay. What about diagnosing these pulmonic valve issues? Are yeah. we using those same methods, PISA and continuity? While those methods can sometimes be used okay. for pulmonic valve issues, yeah. we primarily rely on Doppler ultrasound mm -mm. to assess how narrow the valve is in pulmonic stenosis or how much blood is leaking back in pulmonic regurgitation. Got it. We're looking at the speed and direction of blood flow to get a clear picture of what's happening. It's remarkable how much information we can glean from these ultrasound images. It really is. And just when you think it can't get any more impressive, yeah. we move on to the tricuspid valve. Okay, hit me with it. Uh, What's going on with the tricuspid valve? We have, of course, tricuspid regurgitation. Okay. Where the tricuspid valve is leaking. Uh huh. And tricuspid stenosis. Okay. Where the valve is narrowed. So same story, different valve. You're catching on. All right. And just like with the other valves. Yeah. We use a combination of techniques to assess these conditions mm -hmm. for tricuspid regurgitation. Yeah. The flow convergence method helps us determine how severe the leak is. Got it. And for tricuspid stenosis, uh -huh. Doppler ultrasound helps us diagnose and assess the severity. It's like these formulas are the Rosetta Stone of cardiology, oh. helping us decode all the mysteries of the heart. I love that analogy. And speaking of decoding mysteries. Oh, yeah. We now come to the most mind-blowing part. Echocardiography can actually tell us the pressure inside your heart chambers. Wait, seriously? Yeah. That's insane. I know, right? How does that even work? It all comes down to those trusty Doppler measurements again right. by analyzing the speed and direction of blood flow. Yeah. We can estimate pressures in different parts of the heart, the right atrium, pulmonary artery, left ventricle, and more. So it's like a pressure gauge. Mm. But instead of needles and dials, it's sound waves and formulas. Exactly. Yeah. And those pressure measurements are incredibly important. Yeah. They help us understand the severity of various heart conditions right. and guide treatment decisions. Got it. For example, yeah. high pressure in the pulmonary artery could indicate pulmonary hypertension, mm. a serious condition that requires specialized treatment. This is blowing my mind. I know. It's amazing how much we can learn from these non-invasive techniques. It is. We've covered so much ground already from leaky valves to narrowed openings to internal heart pressures. We have. I'm eager to dive even deeper into this. Me too. There's still so much more to explore. It really is remarkable how much we can learn about the heart without ever making an incision. I know, right? It makes you appreciate the ingenuity of these techniques. Yeah. So you mentioned that echocardiography can even tell us the pressure inside the heart chambers. Right. I'm still wrapping my head around that. Where do we even start with measuring those pressures? Well, it might surprise you, but we often start with a vein. 
Okay. The inferior vena cava or IVC. Yeah, IVC. It's a large vein that carries blood back to the heart from the lower body. Okay. But how does a vein tell us about the pressure inside the heart? By measuring the diameter of the IVC and observing how much it collapses when you inhale, mm. we can actually estimate the pressure in the right atrium. Okay. One of the heart's chambers. So the size of a vein and how much it moves with breathing can actually reveal pressure in the heart. Exactly. That's fascinating. It is. The circulatory system is all interconnected. And yeah. once we know the right atrial pressure, yeah. we can use other formulas and Doppler measurements to figure out the pressure in the pulmonary artery, okay. which carries blood from the heart to the lungs. So it's like a chain reaction, mm -hmm. each measurement giving us clues to unlock the next piece Damn. of the puzzle. Exactly, and that's not all. Okay. We can also use Doppler to estimate the pressure difference between the right ventricle, yeah. which pumps blood to the lungs, right. and the pulmonary artery. Mm -hmm. This difference helps us understand how well the pulmonic valve is functioning. So it's not just about measuring pressure, yeah, right. but also understanding what those pressures mean for the heart's overall performance. Precisely. Okay. For example, yeah. if the pressure difference between the right ventricle and the pulmonary artery is mm -hmm. very high, it could point towards pulmonic stenosis, right. which we discussed earlier. Right, that narrowing of the pulmonic valve. Yeah. It all connects. Now, can we measure pressures on the left side of the heart too? Absolutely. I imagine that's important since the left ventricle is the heart's main pumping chamber. Measuring left atrial pressure is particularly crucial Okay. because it can provide valuable insights into conditions like mitral stenosis and heart failure. Okay, I'm ready for another mind-blowing explanation. Okay. How do we measure pressure in the left atrium? This one's a bit trickier. Yeah. We don't have a direct way to measure it with echocardiography. Okay. Instead, we use a formula that considers the speed of blood flow through the mitral valve mm -hmm. and the pressure in the pulmonary capillaries. Okay. Tiny blood vessels in the lungs. So it's like putting together a puzzle. Right. Using information from different sources to create a complete picture. Exactly. And once we have a good estimate of left atrial pressure, we can use other formulas to determine the pressure in the left ventricle. This is all starting to make sense. Yeah. But I have to admit, yeah. it's a lot to take in. Mm. Are these formulas and calculations something only cardiologists need to know? That's a great question. Thanks. While cardiologists are the ones who primarily use these formulas, right. understanding the basics can benefit anyone interested in heart health. You're right. Knowing how these formulas work helps us appreciate the complexity of the heart mm -hmm. and the incredible tools doctors use to diagnose and treat heart conditions. Yeah. And it can empower you to ask more informed questions about your own heart health mm. and understand the results of your own echocardiograms. Mm. Knowledge is power, as they say. Absolutely. I totally agree. Yeah. Speaking of knowledge, huh? we haven't talked about how we measure left ventricle pressure yet. Right. How do we get that piece of the puzzle? One way to estimate left ventricle pressure is by using the pressure in the aorta, the main artery that carries blood from the heart to the rest of the body. Ah, uh, the aorta, the super highway of the circulatory system. Yeah. But how do we link aortic pressure to left ventricle pressure? The connection is the aortic valve. Okay. When the left ventricle contracts, yeah. it forces blood through the aortic valve and into the aorta. Oh, okay. If the aortic valve is functioning correctly, uh -huh. the pressure in the left ventricle should be nearly the same as the pressure in the aorta. So by measuring aortic pressure, yeah. we're essentially getting a glimpse into the pressure within the left ventricle. Right. That's clever. It is. And if there's a significant difference between those two pressures, yeah. It could indicate a problem with the aortic valve, okay, like aortic stenosis. Ah, it all circles back to the valves. It does. They really are key players in heart function. They are indeed. Yeah. That's why echocardiography is such an invaluable tool. Right. It lets us visualize the valves in action, mm. evaluate their performance, and determine if there are any problems that need attention. This has been such an eye-opening deep dive. We've learned how those echocardiography formulas transform sound waves into a wealth of knowledge about the heart. Yeah. Covering everything from valve function and blood flow to internal pressures. Right. It's remarkable how much information we can gather from these non-invasive techniques. It is truly amazing. And we've still got more to explore. 
Oh, good. There's a whole world of applications for these formulas. Yeah. Especially when looking at specific heart conditions. Mm. Plus, the future of echocardiography is filled with exciting possibilities. I'm on the edge of my seat. I can't wait to hear more. We've covered a lot of ground in this deep dive, exploring how echocardiography formulas can unlock the secrets of the heart. It's been mind-blowing. Yeah. We've seen how these formulas help assess leaky valves, mm. narrowed valves, mm -hmm. and even reveal the pressures inside the heart chambers. Right. But I'm curious, yeah. what does the future hold for echocardiography? That's a great question. The field is constantly evolving. Yeah. For example, three-dimensional echocardiography is becoming increasingly sophisticated, yeah. Yeah. providing incredibly detailed images of the heart's structure and function. So instead of flat two-dimensional pictures, right. we're talking about seeing the heart in its full three-dimensional glory. Yes. That sounds amazing. It is. Wow. Imagine being able to rotate a 3D model of the heart on a screen, mm -hmm. examining it from every angle. Mm -hmm. This allows for much more precise measurements and a deeper understanding of complex conditions. It's incredible. It sounds like something straight out of a sci-fi movie. It really does. Yeah. And with advancements in artificial intelligence, oh, yeah. AI. we might even see echocardiography machines that can automatically analyze images and generate reports. Wow. Helping cardiologists make faster and more accurate diagnoses. So it's like having a superpowered assistant. Mm. Helping cardiologists spot subtle details and patterns that might be missed by the human eye. AI seems to be changing everything these days. It truly is. And in cardiology, it has the potential to revolutionize how we interpret echocardiograms, mm -hmm. leading to earlier detection of heart problems and more personalized treatment plans. This is also fascinating. It feels like we're on the verge of a new era in cardiology. Yeah. With technology playing an increasingly important role in heart health. I completely agree. Wow. As these technologies continue to advance, yeah. we can expect even more breakthroughs in our understanding of the heart and our ability to treat heart disease. This deep dive has been truly enlightening. It has. We've learned so much about how echocardiography formulas take those sound waves and transform them into a wealth of information about the heart. Mm. From valve function to blood flow mm. to those internal pressures, it's incredible what we can now see and understand. It really is remarkable, and it's been a pleasure exploring this topic with you today. Likewise. A huge thank you again to London Heartbeats Z Academy for providing the source material for this deep dive. Yes, thank you to them. Don't forget to check out their website and social media for more fascinating insights into the heart. And be sure to subscribe to The Deep Dive on Facebook, Instagram, Spotify, and YouTube so you don't miss any of our future episodes. We're always diving into new and exciting topics. Great. Bringing you the most interesting information from the worlds of science, technology, and beyond. Sounds good. Until next time, keep those brains buzzing and those hearts healthy.